CataractCoach.com by manual phago surgery, separating the infusion from the aspiration for nucleus removal. Now, you've already used by manual INA, right? Well, this is by manual phago. So, same concept. One hand has irrigation, one hand has aspiration. So, you see at the beginning here, surgeons are using the same keratome to make two incisions about 90 degrees apart. Now, these two incisions are about the same size. And the left hand is going to hold an irrigating chopper, whereas the right hand is going to hold a phaco probe with no silicone sleeve on it. Now, starting off here, using some micro forceps to create a capsular rexus. That's pretty much routine. Get that rexus done here. That looks pretty good. Now, there's some advantages of separating the infusion from the aspiration. And this technique was very popular and gained a lot of traction in 2000. Seven, eight, and nine for you youngsters who weren't around that time, at least not doing category that time. So this was okay. I tried it myself. I even did hundreds of cases with bimanual FACO. But at the time, I didn't find it had much traction because I still had to enlarge the incision to put the IOL in. Now, here we go. Look at the left hand is an irrigating chopper. The right hand is a FACO probe with the needle, but no sleeve. So creating a groove down the middle. Now you really have to master phaco power modulations. Why? Well, because you have the metal needle in contact with the cornea. And if you use continuous phaco energy or some other issue here, you're going to have a corneal wound burn in a second. The silicone sleeve is protective against having a phaco wound burn. Plus, the excess, the fluid that flows out through that main incision helps to cool the cornea also. But here, you don't have that. Look how little fluid leakage there is. These are pretty much airtight or watertight incisions that don't leak much. So there's not a whole lot of cooling of the phaco needle. So if you've got a dense cataract and you're doing bimanual phaco here, be careful. Now, let me tell you about our Cataract Coach podcast. This video is from Rob Weinstock, who was on our Cataract Coach podcast two days ago. Talked all about this. It was a fantastic podcast. You have to check it out. It's everywhere where you find your podcast. Now, here's going back to the bimanual um, irrigation aspiration. Now, you're used to seeing this, left hand's infusion, right hand's aspiration. So the question is, if bimanual IA or bimanual cortex removal is better, well, why isn't bimanual phaco better? And it's reasonable. Now, Dr. Weinstock here has done thousands, probably 10,000 or more cases with bimanual phaco. And it's something that he just adopted, and it works great in his hands. As you can see, it's a very efficient surgery. We're showing you the whole video here. You can see the hand view plus the microscope view. At the end of the case here, putting in some viscoelastic, probably taking the infusion down to zero as you do that. There you go. Take your foot off the infusion pedal. And now you can deliver the IOL. Now watch carefully. Were you going to lower the incision? Nope. He's using a very small lens. This is a Bausch & Lomb lens that goes through a very tiny incision. And so you can, have, you can have these lenses that go through a 1.8 or 2 millimeter incision, and you can do the whole case again. There are two incisions here. Both are probably just under 2 millimeters in width. And you can see at the end of the case here, taking out the viscoelastic, the lens is beautifully centered. This patient has a very nice outcome. You know what? Seal the incisions, call it a day. So, again, a very nice technique. This is called bimanual phaco. It was very popular 15 years ago, kind of waned in popularity. And to be frank, I went back to coaxial phaco too. You can learn more about it on our podcast. Again, cataractcoach.com podcast. Search any podcast service for my name or for Cataract Coach.